Welcome, y'all. You guys look so amazing today. Give yourselves a hand clap for just coming up out of your homes, out of your bed, and coming to a place of worship. Uh, what vibe the worship team created for us today, huh? Come on. Listen. All right. The Bible tells us this, that God dwells in the midst of our praise. And so this, every, every part of the service is for you right? The message is for you. God doesn't need announcements. He doesn't need us to tell him to go to Connections booth for baptism, right? The only part of the service that's for him is the worship time. And so that is an awesome opportunity for us to lift our voices, clap our hands, lift our hands, and tell God how much we honor him and how much we need him in our life. How many of y'all need Jesus? right everybody and if you don't feel like you need Jesus we have to have a very important talk after the service uh with my belt in hand to give you a I'm just kidding (laughs) so we are closing out the sermon series is a vibe and uh, it's been such a blessing all month long to preach this message uh because the reality is is that we do have the ability and the power to create a vibe or change a vibe how many of y'all believe me Right. What happens sometimes in our life is that life has beat us up just a little bit. And when we get into a place of being triggered, we fall back to an old place mentally and we feel like we can't change the vibe. Like we don't have the capacity to change the vibe. But I want to let you know now that you are an atmosphere changer. Say, I am. am. Come on, y'all say it like you mean it. I am. Some of y'all got a bad attitude out there. I need for you to have a bad attitude in here, like snap your fingers and all of that, and say, I am am. an atmosphere changer. Do you believe it? Right? And so there is a, there's a phrase that a lot of times often we say, has anybody ever said, not today, Satan? Right? By show of hands, everybody... Yeah, right? A good percent of y'all, and after this, some of y'all will probably be saying it a whole lot more. And so that that vibe, that is where that phrase, not today, Satan, is born. Because there are times that we experience things in a workplace. How many of y'all got a challenging workplace? Right? And the moment somebody walks in like with a bad attitude, listen, you don't give a bad attitude back. You just say, not today, Satan. Right? And when your kids, how many of y'all have children that, that, that challenge you sometimes? Come on. Ooh. Ooh. Come on, y'all. I can feel some of the pain this way. I, some people raising both their hands like my kids are acting up even right now. <laughs> you slapping them with one hand and worshiping with the other like, sit down. <laughs> right? <laughs> your kids are like, oh, mom, why are you punching me? <laughs> You say, not today, Satan. Right? God has put everything that you need on the inside of you for you to be an atmosphere changer. You don't have to give in to the things that are going on around you. It doesn't matter how the husband is acting, how the wife is acting. It doesn't matter how the children are acting. You have the ability and the capacity to be an atmosphere changer. You can change the vibe. I tell my wife all the time, like, babe, uh, the woman always controls the atmosphere of the home. The man has a responsibility to navigate. Like, this is where we're going as a family. You know, let me hear the men out there. Oh, come on, y'all. Y'all sound... Ladies, y'all watch out now. But if mama ain't happy, y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. So I go look at my wife and be like, listen, I need for you to go ahead and straighten up because the way you act, and that's the way that rest of the household is going to act. So we got to straighten up together. And she doesn't listen to me still, but I'm teasing. I'm giving her a hard time. But this is what 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 says. I can pray this because his divine power has bestowed on us everything necessary for life and godliness through the rich knowledge of the one who has called us by his own glory and excellence. And so everything that you need, God has put on the inside of you. 
So often we're always looking for a resource on the outside to try to be able to figure out how we can accomplish all the things that we want to accomplish and those things that you feel like God has given you to accomplish. But I want to let you know that God has already given you that resource. All we need to do is access it. And so when things are going on in your life, you need to begin to go through the file, through all of your tools, all the things that God has put on the inside of you and say, which is the one I need to use now? Now, I'm not a very good carpenter. I am not a very good handyman. They don't let me touch hammers around here. I hurt myself with them. All right? But I know one thing. <laughs> I know one thing uh, that, that's for sure, and that is that I cannot build a house with just a screwdriver. I need tools, and God has given me those tools, and life is not checkers, but it's chess, and so it's not a one-size-fits-all. We can't deal with every situation the way we dealt with the last situation. In fact, if we want anything to change in our life, some of us need to start changing some things in our life. And some of that is changing the way that we think, right? And so God is wanting to take you to another level. That means that you got to stop thinking like you did on the last level. Am I, am, I, am I preaching a good word so far? Yeah. And some of us just need to uh, begin to learn how to open our mouths. It's so easy for me to preach on this side and for you to just kind of, mm -hmm. but I need for some of y'all to open your mouth because the same way that you can open your mouth in here, you'll learn that on the outside, when the devil tries to creep in, you can begin to open your mouth at him. <laughs> See, the devil is a, is a, a God-made being and he can't read your mind. And so if you want him to leave you alone, guess what you got to do? You got to tell him. You, you can't just think him away. You got to tell him, listen, you can't have access in my home. You can't have access in my mind. You can't have access in my church. You can't have access in my finances. We begin to take control. Why? Because God has put everything on the inside of us that we need. And when we begin to open up our mouths, then God responds up in the heavens and backs us up. And Satan realizes he can't touch you. In fact, the Bible says that when the devil comes in like a flood, God raises up a standard. I started to really wanting to break that down for us to fully understand how God is on our side. Now, the prophet Isaiah is the one that prophesied this particular scripture to us. And he is telling us in this particular prophecy that although you have turned your back on God, God has not turned his back on you. And that is what he was discussing with the Israelites during that time. They, were, they became an idolatrous people. They became a people that were very sinful and their army was growing very weak. And God was telling uh, the people through the prophet Isaiah, listen, they are acting cray-cray down there, but I want you to tell them that even though they are acting cray-cray, I am still on their side and I am still their God and I will respond accordingly. And the scripture says this in the book of Isaiah chapter 59 verse 19 says, So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. So this is what a standard is. Have you ever watched like uh, some, some uh, war movies like the medieval times and they would walk around with these flags uh, that represented the kingdom in which they were from? Well, it wasn't because these flags were nice and pretty. These flags raised up meant that there was an army that was there willing to fight. This is where we get the, the uh, raising the white flag. That, that was a sign of surrenderance. When I was in the military, each platoon and each battalion had a flag alongside with the American flag. And when we were in combat, as long as that flag was up in the air, that means that we were ready to fight another day. And so the Israelites, they were acting the way that they were acting and their army was becoming weaker. And God was saying, listen, when the enemy comes into attack, I'm going to raise up this flag so that the enemy knows that if they come any closer, that there is an army here that is ready to fight back. See, as a people, we have access to this standard. And when the enemy comes into your life, God raises up a standard. But some of us don't operate under the standard of heaven. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so every young person, I don't know if they left, if you have a t-shirt on, go ahead and stand up and you were a part of that script. 
Why don't y'all come up to the front? Y'all just come up to the front really quick. Y'all give him a hand clap. All right, and so we have greed over here. Give it up for greed. Woo! And then over here we have, who are you, sir? Lust. Lust. All right, you were talking about the honeys over there, right? <laughs> gluttony. You're too skinny to be gluttony. Pride. And sloth, lazy. That's what sloth means. It means lazy. And so these individuals, and then, hi, my name is Pastor G. <laughs> Y'all like that? They let me be a part of the team. All right? And so what happens is that in our life, we allow the vibe to be within one of these areas. And there's so much more. But in our lives, instead of giving into the standard that God raises up in heaven against our enemy, we allow greed to step into the picture. And we just say that we're grinding. I'm, I'm, I'm just out here trying to secure the bag. Have we ever said that before? Right? I'm just out here trying to get the bag. Well, every time you get the bag, you waste the bag. You know how I know? You still got your taxes? It sure would be nice to have another Stimmy, huh? We gave it a short name, Stimmy. If you're a guest here, I'm a real preacher, y'all. We're going to talk about it. What are you, lust? Oh, gosh. If I just had me a new boo, everything would be all right. I'm so tired of being all alone. If some, I just need somebody to make me happy. Can you make yourself happy? Whew, Jesus. Gluttony. That chocolate cake ain't going to make you happy. Chocolate cake ain't going to bring them back. See, some of us, and here's the real truth, that some of us find comfort in feeding ourselves. And the reality is that then you get to a place where you have overfed yourself and you're unhappy because you're not happy, you're, you're not, you don't like who you're looking at in the mirror. And so with one comes another, then comes another, and, and you ate too much, and now you're not happy, and you have a spirit of depression upon you and a spirit of suicide upon you, and you, you just don't know what to do with yourself. And who are you again? Pride. Oh, <laughs> woo. somebody say Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. Some of y'all are good, but y'all ain't that good. Right? And, and some people just, they, they got a little bit of talent. And here's the deal. God is looking for your uh, obedience, not your gift. God gave you the gift and he could take it away. Come on. Listen, your only responsibility is to be obedient. And half the time, we are not so obedient with what God has given to us. And lazy? <laughs> A.K.A. lazy? <laughs> Moving around like molasses. I, you know, I looked up what molasses was. and It's just a thick, thick old syrup that doesn't move very. You know when you're trying to get ketchup out the bottle and it just won't come out of the bottle? That's a sloth. <laughs> I'll look for a job tomorrow. I'll come to God tomorrow. I'll, I'll change my mind tomorrow. I'll, I'll do better tomorrow. I'm just doing me. I'm like, hmm. And what is your name? Uh, everything. Everything. Jealousy and anger. Gen jealousy, envy, anger. Wow, that's a painful combination. Right? Uh, because some of us are mad, and uh, you're just mad at yourself first. But, but you take it out on everybody else. And the biggest problem that we have in our time is envy. We want to be everybody else and we want to have what everybody else has. But nobody knows the hell that somebody went through to get that. See, somebody may want to be on this side of the stage having this microphone in their hand and, and, and will do just about anything, but you don't know the hell I've been through to be a pastor of this church. You don't know the pain. Listen, let me explain it to you. Pastoring is explained in this way in simple terminology. I please everybody and nobody at the same time. Hi, my name is Pastor G. So we get to a place where we succumb into one of these areas, but none of the things of this world are sustainable. Why? Because where you could get a dollar and you waste a dollar. In fact, they say Americans waste a dollar thirty-two, a dollar and thirty-two cents for every dollar they earn. 
And, and, and when we look at lust, uh, they, they can't make you happy. The other 10 didn't make you happy. Why do you think that the next 10 are going to make you happy? Uh, should I continue to go down the line where we continue to put our hands on things that are not sustainable? But if we can grab on to the grace that God has for us, if we can grab on to the vibe of heaven and be under the umbrella of his grace, the Bible says it this way, that my God is the same yesterday. Come on, y'all help me. Today and forever. In other words, it's not. he's not like a dollar bill. He's not like a $20 bill. He's not like a $100 bill. My God is my provider. He provides for all of my needs and all of my wants according to his riches and his glory. Why would I want to put all of my cookies in one jar when I can have the whole batch? Because God said so. Y'all give him a hand clap. Thank you so much for See, the heavens have a standard. Somebody say the heavens have a standard. I love this scripture in Isaiah chapter 59. He says this, as for me, says the Lord, this is my covenant with them. My spirit who is upon you and my words, somebody say my words. This is God speaking. My words, he's saying my words with which I have put in your mouth. Somebody say my mouth. And then he says, shall not depart from your mouth, nor from the mouth of your descendants. In other words, your children nor from the mouth of your descendants' descendants, that means your grandbabies, uh, says the Lord, from this time and forevermore. And so that is the standard of heaven. In other words, what we read in the good book, what we read in the word of God, and we speak, those are the words that he has put in our mouth. And we have access to these words forever and forever. And not only do we have access to these words, but if we do as the word has shown us to do, then our descendants will have access to these words. And not only will they have access to the word of God, but my descendants' descendants. And uh, uh, in reality, if we do it just right, we can continue on from my descendants' descendants' descendants. Drop it low. You got to drop it low a little bit. Drop it low. Uh, Drop it. Hey, and so the word that we have access to, God is saying, I have a vibe and I have a standard. And if you cling on to my vibe and you cling on to my standard, your life will be much different than what you know it to be right now. But oftentimes what happens is that we wind up giving into the things of this world and we lose ourselves. The biggest issue that we have is our identity. All of them said, hello, my name is. When, when you are not around, people don't identify you by your, by your name. But they identify you by your actions. Who that lie? Who that thief? And so we have to grab a hold to the identity that God has for us. When I'm not around people, I hope they say, that preacher, that, that man of God, that individual that will invade hell with a water pistol, that individual that will come and get you up out of your sin when you are locked down, don't know where to go in your addiction that will pull you out by your shirt, slapping you up along the way to get your head together. Uh, him? I've done it before. Helping people because if the devil is going to come and snatch you up, then God needs some people that will snatch you back. Now, what are the words of heaven? I'm so glad y'all asked. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4 says, You are from God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Whew. You could say that every day, all day, and that will preach all by itself. 
greater is he that is in me. You could have a puffed up chest and think that you're better than me, but I know that who is in me is greater than you. So it don't matter what you think of me. I know who is on the inside of me. And I know that greater is he on the inside of me than anyone in this world. And I can do all things because if he is in me and he created all things, I can overcome it all. See, these are the words that we can speak out of our mouth. It's very simple, right? It's very simple, but, but we got to get to a place where we build muscle memory. And some of us, our muscle memory is this. Ugh. How you doing? The devil is just having his way in my life. What's wrong with you? You know how he act, girl. <laughs> You know, I, I preached this some time ago, but I haven't in a while, and there's some new people here, so I'm going to revisit this. I preached it this way. Ladies, you want to have some control and dominion over your man? How many of y'all need to have a little bit more dominion and control over your man in the household? Yeah? Y'all don't act like, y'all don't act super spiritual now. Now, I'm trying to teach y'all something good, right? Some of y'all are like sneakingly like, while, while they man are not looking like. The Bible says this, right, that, that whatever is under, I have authority over whatever is under my foot. And so while you're laying down, while he's sleeping in the bed, maybe uh, uh, hung over or something going on and he ain't acting right, you stand up on the bed. Listen, turn off the ceiling fan first. All right, I don't want to, I don't want you to split your wig, all right? And so you stand up, you turn off that ceiling fan, and you say these words because the Lord gave us the words, and you say, I have dominion over whatever is under my foot, and I'm declaring that you will be a man of God, that you will preach the gospel, that you will lead this household, that you will be the priest of this home. Oh, are y'all listening to what I'm saying? Y'all... These are the words that God has put in our mouths, and we just have to use them effectively. So, ladies, stop your phone ministry and begin to take dominion when your man ain't acting right. Deuteronomy chapter, uh, chapter 28, verse 12 through 14 says this. The Lord will open to his good treasure the heavens to give the rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations. Oh, y'all, this is so good, y'all. You will lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. Come on, y'all. Y'all know that the word says that the borrower is a slave to the lender. The word is saying that, that God will give you provision where you will be the lender and not the borrower. That should excite some of us in this place. Verse 13 says, and the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. I'm tired of people. People looking me over. I'm tired of being last, but I know that the word of God says that I am the head and I'm not the tail. You shall be above only and not beneath. If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and are careful to observe them. That's a good word right there. Listen, some of us need to begin to allow those things to come out of our mouths. That when you are at the workplace and you're, th you're thinking to yourself, I'm so sick and tired of cleaning these bathrooms. I'm so sick and tired of people talking to me however they want to. You begin to speak out the words. And although your position on this side is one thing, your position in the spirit is a whole nother. And you say, people may be looking at me as if I was uh, uh, the tail, but I'm actually the head. And begin to speak to yourself the words that God has already given you to speak. It's not foolish to say some things when it looks, when it looks kind of bad. You be like, I, I sound like a fool trying to speak positive into this. It just don't look good. No, you got to begin to speak, speak positivity to that thing. The world is using stuff like manifest your words. No. You're just speaking the word of God. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 3 through 7 says this. You will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. The fruit of your womb will be blessed. The fruit of your womb means the, the children that you bear will be blessed. And the crops of your land and the young of your livestock and the calves of your herds and the lambs of your flocks, your basket and your kneading trough will be blessed. 
You will be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. The Lord will grant that the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. They will come at you from one direction but flee from you in seven. I'm so tired of people coming against me. When you begin to speak the word, listen, 10,000 may fall at your right hand, but none will come near you. See, you create the vibe. Your place of employment does not create the vibe. If you're going to be baptized, go ahead and start getting ready now and changing. See, greed doesn't change the vibe. See, that there's some individuals that think that if they have more money, that it will solve all of their problems. I know millionaires that want to commit suicide. Well, if I was famous and if everyone knew me, listen, fame doesn't mean anything. It just means a lot of people know you. And I'd rather be an influencer than famous. I'm not trying to be famous. I'm trying to be an influencer. Because influencers change lives. Famous people just are well known. And last, listen, let me tell you something that we have such a skewed thought process in regards to relationships. But I promise you that God has a one for you. And let me let you in on a little secret. When God created Eve for Adam, he created only one Eve, not a lineup. It wasn't pick the one you like, Adam. God is looking for a people that he can work through. But the devil's greatest weapon, I've said it all month long, is distraction. Because as long as you could be distracted with the wrong one, you're too busy to have the right one come in the picture. And as long as you're distracted with the things that have been bogging your mind down, you are too busy to find actual freedom. But God is saying, I'm looking for a people that will, that will be atmosphere changers. That will be willing to take on what I have for them in a greater way, says the Lord. See, when you bring your gift to God, God then sprinkles his anointing. I don't want to be good. I want to be allergic to good. I don't want to be average. I want to be allergic to average. I want to be above average. Why? Because my God is above average. Come on. I want to be above average because everything that God wants to do on this side of eternity is above average. When I look through the word, God didn't halfway heal people. He healed people. God didn't halfway deliver people. He delivered people. God came to set the captives free. He came to open up a pathway. He came to allow there to be a turnaround in an atmosphere that the enemy is trying to control. Let me, let me tell you that the Bible says this, that, that the earth is the devil's domain. And Jesus came so that we can have access to spiritual dominion. And so when you see all the craziness running around and you're thinking to yourself, why would God allow that? Listen, sin did that. But you have the ability to spiritually take dominion. Spiritually take dominion. When you get to a place where you just feel like your mind is just going in circles and you don't even know what to think begin to cry out to God and say God I need you to bring order to my mind and whatever spirit is trying to come over me and bring confusion God I know that you are not a God of confusion I know that you are God of order I know that you came and you put the earth in its access and everything in it God you are the God of all things and I call to order right now in the name of Jesus I anoint my mind I anoint my eyes I anoint my ears I will not allow myself to give in to the trickery of Satan and 
doesn't matter if things are falling down around me, that the walls are closing in and the ceiling is coming down. It will not crush me. It will not destroy me. It will not kill me. I am the Lord and the God Almighty is willing to take you out of places that you put yourself in if you allow him to because he is a vibe creator. He just needs one thing. Somebody say what? Your obedience to let him. Because God could raise up a standard and you still give in to the enemy. Some of us have been living our lives in this way, losing the battle before it even began. But today is the first day of the rest of your life. And my challenge to you on this side of this altar is this. That you leave here different than the way that you came in. Otherwise, you just had a good time today. The goal of this thing is for you to leave different than the way that you came in. Because we're in a time now that the devil ain't playing. Stop playing. Stop playing. Now is the hour in the name of of Jesus. Every head bowed and every eye closed. God, we just thank you for today. We thank you that we get to worship you in freedom. That's not the story everywhere in the world, but I thank you that we have ability to do that today. We honor you, God, for being such an awesome God. We thank you that, God, you are in you. I can be an atmosphere changer. God, you put every resource that I need on the inside of me. Lord, may we take authority. Every head bowed and every eye closed. If there's anyone in this place that would want to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior of their life, don't put it off to tomorrow, what you could do today. If you've never accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life and you would like to do that today, would you just slip up your hand right where you are? Is there anyone in here in this place that would say, I need to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior of my life? And I don't want to put it off anymore. Is there anyone? Perhaps you've slipped away and you're saying, you know what? I need to rededicate my life. And I've just messed up, but I'm ready to come on back home. And I thank God that although I've slipped away, God, that he's never left my side. And he's here for you, waiting for you and saying, come on back home. If that's you, just slip up your hand right where you are. I see that hand right there. I see that hand. I see those hands over there. Thank you so much. Is there anyone else? Lord, I just pray for those individuals that raise their hand in obedience to you, Father God. Lord, I pray that you would just touch their hearts right now in the name of Jesus, God. That you would reframe their minds. That they would no longer think as they've been thinking or act as they've been acting, Father God. But that they would begin to speak your word as your word has told us, God. That out of our bellies will come out the words that you have given to us. Thank you, God, that you've given us the word. Thank you, God, that we can rest upon your word, Father God. That, that we can hold tight to every word that has been spoken through your word, my God. Lord, may they reconnect to you greater than any time before. And that you would heal every, room, every wound and every broken heart right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for being a part of our service on today. Listen, if you have any prayer needs, we would love to pray with you. So send them on over. Our hope and desire is that the message was an impact to you and your children and your entire household. We take our motto here seriously. Why do life alone? Listen, there's no reason why you should do life alone. So come and be a part of do us. Let's do life together. <laughs>